Hello, welcome to another exciting tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to explain how to use Bolt. And since Unity acquired Bolt, now Bolt becomes free and more accessible. So let's get to it. So first, we need to go to the Asset Store. And then once it's loaded, we need to search for Bolt. I'm going to click this Bolt here and then press Import. If you haven't downloaded it, you need to download it first and then press Import and then just import the assets. When it is imported, you can see we have this install bolt folder and now we need to install it. Inside this folder, let's just run the net4 package and after that we can just press import and currently it's importing. When it finish import, it will show this setup wizard and then just click next. We can choose between human naming and programmer naming. For beginner, probably human naming is better but I would advice to use programmer naming so we can learn and understand the correct terms and naming based on the programming side of things. This will also make learning programming easier later if needed. For the assembly options, we can just leave the default settings as it is and then press next. And also for the type options, currently we just want to leave it as it is and press generate. Now the setup is completed and it may take a while with the imports and the generating so just uh, be patient and now we can start using bolt okay so now we have installed the bolt now we need to open the bolt window in order to do that let's just go to the window here and let's open the graph window and this will open the bolt graph window we can dock this graph to the bottom part of our panel here and we still need another two panel for working with bolt here under the window we want to open the graph inspector and we can dock this to the side here and also we want to enable the variables window and let's just put it here okay so now we've ready to work with bolt I have a new scene here and I'm going to add an object so under the sprites I've already created a new square sprite and circle sprite I'm going to drag the square to the scene here and let's just scale this and this will be the ground and let's add a box collider 2D and I'm going to tint the color to a green color and let's add another one a circle and for the circle I'm going to add a rigid body 2D and also a circle collider 2D and for the color I'm going to change this to red and this will be the player that we are going to move using the bolt graph so in order to create a graph or a bolt nodes, we need to add a flow machine component. And then here we can create a new macro script. So let's just click the new button here and it will ask where to save the flow. I'm going to put this in a folder called flow. And here I'm going to name this player tutorial. Okay, so now we have the macro created. If we open the flow graph here, you see that we have a start event and an update event. And this works exactly like the C sharp script. Start are called one time on the first frame when the scene started. And update it's executed or called every frame. So in order to move or to detect input and control, we should do it inside the update. And for initializing, we should do it on start. And here, there is a green arrow on each of the event. This is the flow. So every method or every action that we want to run inside the update event, we need to connect this flow here. So let's just give it a try here. I'm going to add a new unit and I'm going to search for input and I'm going to use get access. And this is for detecting a certain axis. If we open the project settings under the input manager here access we have a lot of access for example horizontal it's for the left and right button or a and b so we can use this i'm going to copy the name here and i'm going to paste the name inside the access name here and if we want to expand the window here we can just press this full screen button and it will expand our window i'm going to change the inspector to be on the right side both the variables and the graph one and we can work better with larger views here. So let's just try to connect this here. And basically we need to connect this to another unit. 
and this is the value that's been generated by the input get axis so for example uh, I'm going to add a rigid body I'm going to type this okay we can get the velocity and we can set the velocity I'm going to set the velocity here as you can see here we have this green arrow so let's just connect this and it asks for a factor and this axis returns a float between negative 1 to 1 depending on the input that we are currently pressing either a left button or a right button so in order to connect this to the vector we need to convert this to a new vector so let's just create a vector 2d we want to use the new vector 2x and y and this will output a new vector but we can input a float value as the component here and we need to also connect the flow here so I'm going to change the flow connection here and now let's just try to connect the output of get axis to this float x here and now let's go back to unity and let's give it a try I'm going to save the scene and now let's press play here you see that we can move to the right to the left but the ball is falling very slow because our y velocity gets resets to zero every frame and that is why the ball falls very slow so in order to fix this we need to pass the rigid body y velocity to the y value here so the y value won't get changed and we will pass the current y velocity to the set velocity here in order to do that we can just add a rigid body 2d rigid body 2d dot velocity and I'm going to use the get unit here and here I'm going to expand this to a component so here if we release on this empty area here and then choose the factor 2 here you see that we can expand or we can extract the x or the y value using the get unit here so let's just use this and this will output a float which is the y value and we can connect this to this y slot here the other thing that I've noticed here our horizontal movement is very slow because the value of this this get axis is either negative 1 or 1 so we want to multiply this with a variable now we need to create a new variable so let's just create a new variable called speed and here we want to change the type to float and let's just set the default value to 3 and now in order to use this variable we can just drag this equal sign here and put it on our graph here so now we have this get variable action I'm going to rearrange our node here and we need to multiply the horizontal value here with this variable so let's just add another unit and we need to use the formula and basically the formula is for calculation any calculation we can just put the formula here so we want to multiply the a input and the b input in order to do that we need to type a and then multiply this by b with the asterisk sign and now we want to put the horizontal to the a slot or the a input and the get variable to the b input and here we can just output the result to the x input of the vector here and now let's save this if we run the scene you'll see now it falls faster according to our gravity and then if we go to the right or left it move faster and if we change the variable to a much larger value then it became even more faster okay so yeah that is basically how we work with bolt and it works exactly like coding but with visual scripting or visual note style and please stay tuned for another episode because I'm going to explore more with this bolt here we can create jumping motion and later we are going to replace the sprite with a character and play the animation depending on the movement so thanks a lot for watching and if you like this video hit that like button and do subscribe i'll see you on the next video